Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. Stop. Uh, before we get uh, through with this college football segment, I will say there was kind of an interesting thing that also came out of the Florida LSU game, uh, and that was Dan Mullen in the post game. And I'm sure by now you guys have seen the quotes, heard the coach quotes, heard the quotes referenced. But in essence, Dan Mullen was asked about his playoff picture, about Florida's playoff picture, and he basically referenced something that we've talked about at length on this show with college football. And that is the idea of this, these crazy imbalanced schedules that we see this year. And this is something that I've really been hammering home, really maybe since the Big Ten came back, where what happens with a 10-1 Notre Dame versus a 5-0 Ohio State? Or what happens with a 9-0 Cincinnati versus a this team versus a that team? That team won their conference, that team didn't. This team has one loss, but they play twice as many games. And so it's been kind of this, this topic that's been bubbling under the surface of college football. It's been brought to the head over the last few days. Dabo Sweeney talked a little bit about it last week when he was asked about it as it pertained to Clemson. Then Dan Mullen was asked about it in the postgame press conference. He was basically asked, should your playoff stature be impacted by this loss? What does it all mean? Here is what Dan Mullen said. This is a direct quote. I don't have a vote on that. I'm not in the room. I know we've played 10 games, so I guess probably the best thing to do would, would have been to play less games because you seem to get rewarded this year for not playing games in college football. Damn, Mullen, off the top rope, my goodness. Uh, and like when I look at this quote, uh, I do think two things can be true, right? I think first of all, I will say it does have a little bit of a Coach K after the Illinois game feel where... I don't really believe that Coach K said what he said because his team got smoked by Illinois. But what I would also say is I don't think it looks good to make the comments that Coach K made after your team got smoked by Illinois. It's one thing to say after a 22-point win over whomever, hey, maybe we just sh shouldn't be playing these out-of-conference games anymore. It's a lot different. It lands a lot different than after you get smoked for the second time at home. So I think with Dan Mullen, I think there was a portion of the college football fan base and the college football world that kind of thought, come on now, dude, you just lost. Now you're bringing up this Ohio State thing. But like, I do think it's a relevant point, right? And I do think really what we saw on Saturday speaks to what college football is, which is what I just talked about a minute ago, which is the idea that the games on the field do have to matter. And the one thing that's crazy about college football is every year we have these totally unexpected upsets that we couldn't see coming under any circumstance. Last year, th this year we had LSU Florida the other night. Last year, if you remember, South Carolina stunned Georgia at Georgia. Clemson has taken weird losses in the regular season at Syracuse to Pittsburgh. Um, you know, Ohio State, it's worth mentioning. Uh, has taken some weird losses. They lost to Purdue a few years ago. They lost to Iowa a few years ago. Two losses that, frankly, cost them a playoff berth in each of those seasons. And so, like, I do think Mullen's point does kind of hold weight, right? College football, like, like, at some point, I do understand that you want the four best teams in the college football playoff, but I also do think that we should be rewarding teams that are going in week in and week out, night in and night out, playing games, playing the games that are on their schedules, whether they're shorthanded, not shorthanded, whatever. If you paid attention to the Florida game, uh, they didn't have their best player, Kyle Pitts, but they kept playing anyway. And so when Dan Mullen's making this point, like, yeah, I do think it's a little bit of sour grapes. I do think it's not the best look to say it after a loss, but I also think he's kind of got a point. Florida just completed a 10-game SEC schedule. They've played, you know, 10 games since September 26th. Now they're going to play Alabama on top of this where you have Ohio State at home. They've played five games and they've played two games in the last five weeks. Had the Maryland game canceled. Then they played Indiana. Had the uh, Illinois game canceled. Then they played Michigan State. Then the Michigan game is canceled. And now they're going to play Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship game. And so like Dan Mullen's point of, we're playing every freaking week here, guys. Come on now, throw us a freaking bone. Whereas Ohio State has basically, for each of their last three games, had a bye week going into it. And so in theory, you would think that uh, Ohio State was at its best going into all three of those games. Now we'll see if it happens next week against Northwestern, but I think it's a fair point for Dan Mullen. And I do think it is a point 
that I, I, I don't, I feel like I'm the only one talking about it, right? I feel like, I understand that, yeah, Dabo and Dan Mullen said it, but I think that I feel like I've been as vocal about this idea of why are we rewarding teams that have played half as many games, whether it's their fault, whether it's their conference's fault, whatever, when they're simply, we don't have the math to back it up. And then beyond that, I would take it a step further. It goes to what I said on last Wednesday's episode about the college football playoff committee. I have never been one of these conspiracy theorists. Oh, they only put in teams because of TV ratings and eyeballs and this and that. But it's kind of hard not to think that this year, right? Like, like to me, I think Ohio State's a really good football team. I think they're really awesome. I love watching Justin Fields. I would take him with the number two overall pick if I had the number two overall pick and I couldn't get Trevor Lawrence. He's that special. He's that good. I thought he was awesome the other week against Michigan State in a game where he was basically playing with his backup offensive line. But if you look at what Ohio State's actually done, first of all, five games total uh, in a season where, again, Clemson and Notre Dame will complete an 11-game schedule next week. Uh, Florida and Alabama will complete uh, an 11-game schedule next week. And Ohio State's going to play six games. And on top of that, are we really ranking Ohio State at number four because they're the fourth best team in the country or that they have the resume of a fourth best team in the country? Because you look at everybody else. Alabama's beaten two teams ranked in the top ten, okay? Notre Dame has the win over Clemson. If Clemson wins, they'll have the win over Notre Dame. Ohio State, they've played five games. They've played one team with a winning record. It's Indiana, okay? Indiana is the only team they've played with a winning record. Now, it's not Ohio State's fault that Penn State stinks this year and Nebraska stinks this year and Michigan State stinks this year, but they do stink. And Ohio State's played one good team on the entire schedule, and we're just putting them in at number four because they're Ohio State. And I even brought this up on Twitter the other night, and I I probably didn't phrase it appropriately, but I think you'll understand where I'm going with this. We've been comparing Ohio State versus Texas A&M. We've been comparing Ohio State versus Florida versus whoever. How about this? Ohio State, as it stands, is 5-0, playing for a Big Ten championship next week. USC is 5-0 and playing for a Pac-12 championship next week. Yet USC is ranked number 15 in the country, and Ohio State is ranked number 4. And to be abundantly clear, I'm not saying that I think USC is as good as Ohio State. I don't even think it's close. To be abundantly clear, I'm not saying USC deserves to be ranked significantly higher. But what I am saying is, if this committee is ranking teams based on their resumes, based on what they've done, how can you tell me that one 5-0 Power 5 team is ranked 15th in the country and one Power 5 team is ranked number 4 in the country? You can't, unless one particular thing is true. That you're just basically basing, ranking teams based on what you think they should be or how you think they should be or where you think they should be ranked and not on anything that they've actually done on the field. And to be abundantly clear, for the last time, Ohio State, I want them in the playoff. I want to see Justin Fields versus Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields versus Bama or Justin Fields versus Notre Dame or Justin Fields versus Texas A&M for that matter. I don't think it can happen, but I want to see it. They're fun. They're awesome. They're great to watch. But all I'm saying is, it does kind of prove what I was telling you the other day, right? The committee's just making stuff up as they go. They drop Cincinnati uh, because they haven't played in a few weeks, but Ohio State hasn't budged. Ohio State has the same record as USC. USC's ranked 15th, Ohio State's ranked 4th, and Ohio State's played half as many games as Texas A&M, Clemson, uh, Notre Dame, whoever. So I'm not going to get too worked up about this, but I did think Dan Mullen's uh, comments resonated. I did think they made sense. I did think they were interesting, and I did think they were worth evaluating because I do, I do believe that over these next few days going into next weekend, this is going to be the single biggest conversation. If Clemson and Notre Dame are in or if they're not in, and you're talking about Ohio State with the same record as USC, why is USC ranked 14th or 15th and Ohio State's ranked 4th? Why is Ohio State ranked ahead of Texas A&M when they're potentially going to have basically one good win on their resume against Indiana? Northwestern's okay, but Northwestern can't score. So anyway, I did think Dan Mullen's comments carried weight. I had no problem with them at all.